Anon. Anon, what are you doing? You know we have a guest on right now, right? Not just look, any guest, too. Look, no, today was a real shit show with you rats. Yeah, but it's tonight. Yeah, it's Wednesday. It's 7 p.m. That means you know there's a quest on. Yeah, this is the questionnaire. I am the unknown factor. You know, if I'm in the house, I got my Zalian brother with me. He's all creepy in the dark, too, man. What are you about to, like, are you burning evidence? Are you about to die by a xenomorph attack? What's going on? Oh, no, bro. I'm just uh, living by that Cuban beat. Okay. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I like that Cuban <clears throat> beat, man. I know somebody else that does as well. That's our guest today. Who, look, if you haven't seen some of this man's work, read some of this man's work, something at some point in your life, All right. I, I'm, I, I don't know what you're doing. I don't. I'm sleeping under rocks. Yeah, it's for real. But it's Mark Verheiden in the house. How you doing, man? Doing good. How are you? Um, excellent. Excellent, man. It's a pleasure to have you on. Um, good to be here. There's so many, like, we usually start out with a couple different questions, man, but uh, I just got to know right off the bat, uh, so many things, really. I don't even know where to start with you, Mark, so I'm going to let Hardaway, because there's like a 1,010 questions going through my head in regards to everything, as well as the some of your answers you gave. Phenomenal. But you know what? I want to know, actually, right off the top, what makes you think they make pizza <laughs> for tiny people? With the tops of the French bread pizza. Well, what else would they do with them? I mean, for goodness sakes. I mean, that's just, I think that's what they do with them. So, I don't know how tiny the people would be. But. Uh, that's the best answer so far. Pretty small. Yeah. Dumbelina. Yeah, you, you totally, you totally win for yeah. best answer up to this <laughs> point for that particular question. I can't stay forever because I. Got right. people. I'm still waiting to get I back to you, but part of it. What? Mouse throwing you under the bus, bro. Ain't you used to it? Oh yeah. Um. So, what made you stay in the industry? And what, like, like, what, what keeps you in the industry of making comic books and movies, like writing for them? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, I suppose money's the wrong answer, but uh, I, uh, <laughs> but it's not, it's a part of it. Um, no, I, I, look, ever since I was a kid, I like writing stories and I've been very lucky. I've been able to write stories for TV and movies and comics. And I was a comic book fan from when I was like five years old, loved comics, bought a million of them. But also was a movie fan and went to college trying to sort of major in film. Uh, they didn't have a major, but I took a lot of film classes and moved to L.A. when I was young and uh, decided I wanted to break into screenwriting, which I was able to do. And uh, uh, but which I, I appreciate, love, by the way. Oh, thank you. I love I love mm. writing. I mean, I just I really do. Ever since I was a kid, I loved uh, writing, um, sitting there, figuring out stories, figuring out not just stories, but little articles and whatever um i don't know how deep you want to go into it when i was a kid i started a group of fans who would contribute their own little magazines to a uh a collective they're called amateur press alliances and i started one when i was 14 and uh, uh we had guys like frank miller in it back when he was 17 um uh paul chadwick when he was young doing concrete before he did concrete uh, a lot of guys who went on all the guys at dark horse were in it which is how i met a lot of those guys so randy stradley and chris warner and uh, uh mike richardson were all in it so if you know any of those guys they're, they're they ran dark horse mike still does and uh so i became friends with them before dark horse started and uh they gave me a chance, and again, I was able to turn my writing I was doing for fun into writing I could, uh, you know, make a living at eventually. It took a while, but I finally did. What was it like well, in that instance where it, where it turned from you were doing it to fun to, oh, holy hell, this is a career now, which you've obviously excelled at. For anybody that don't know, I mean, 
check the man's IMBD or his comic book, what he's done from the work of <laughs> aliens to predators to all the films and TV the shows. Man is the culture. It's it, it's he, he, he is part of the culture. It, yeah, it is very extensive, man. Up to and including um like the fact that you worked on the mask, which as we brought up several times, well, we haven't brought up that particular film, but we bring up several times on the show. Comics have become so prolific within TV and film that a lot of them that are made at this point, people don't even realize are based on a source material that is a comic book. And I definitely think that that is one of those films as well, that that, that escapes people's head. But look, I, I promise you, um, this mask is very different from the Jim Carrey one. You know, um, yep, <laughs> yep, very much so. But um, falling sky. But no, 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 no. Hey, wait. Hero, what, what, what was man. it like in that moment? Sorry, Hardaway. What was it like in that moment to where when it when it turned like that for you? Well, I can you know it's funny. I can remember the moment. Um, and and so it was when uh, DC Comics hired me to write full time for them on a book called The Phantom. It's the purple guy on the horse. And yeah. uh, they offered uh, me a deal for a year and I was able to quit my day job. And uh, my wife, I was talking to my wife about, or she wasn't my wife then, but uh, talking to my girlfriend then. And I said, well, what do you think? Uh, should I do it? And she said, no, you kick yourself forever if you don't. So um, I did it and I was already writing Aliens and, and I. I may have started Predator, but I was definitely doing Aliens at the time, and that's kind of what got me into DC. But that was that was the moment where I said, "Geez, I think I'm going to try to do this, not maybe as a career, but I'm going to try to do it full time." And then, and then when I sold my first studio screenplay, that's when I went, "Okay, I got to sell a few more of these, then I'll really have a career." And uh, I did, and uh, so yeah, but it was the Phantom that actually uh, did it. It's so funny to me that you say The Phantom, because look, I swear you're just going to keep bringing up films that I think a bunch of people have watched, but they probably don't realize it is based on a comic book. Because Phantom is one of those comic book characters that never reached the peaks of, I, I don't know, I'm trying to think of somebody, like I wouldn't even say he's as popular a character as almost any of the X-Men. You know, nice. nothing yeah. against The Phantom. I enjoyed the film. I think it's a good comic, but I'm just saying it's another one of those things, man. Does do you ever think about that, Mark? The fact that you've taken, like, you've taken and worked on things that became a different medium like that, and it's something that might even people, a lot of them that consumed it, might not even realize it's source material. Well, I know a lot of people don't know Time Cop was based on a comic book. So, uh, but the Mask and Time Cop, yeah. Oh, that was an old. DC or Dark Horse comic, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I out. vaguely, I'll be honest. When I watched that movie, I was not realizing that. I mean, I was fairly yeah. young when Time Cop came out. Um, but now that I think about it, I do remember seeing Time Cop from Dark Horse. Man, I, I do. Um, that's that's insane, Mark. What do you think of that as far as the medium, man? Especially looking at where it's at now. Um, cause you know, and we've had this discussion that the MCU, when they came in, they changed the game a little because it became that, well, you can't really buy Warner or DC or you can't buy Marvel or DC properties now because Warner brothers and Disney right. respectively. So a lot of companies started to reach other places. Do you think that's had an effect? And why do you think it is? People don't understand how much comic books affect pop culture. Cause I swear they don't. Yeah, I know. I don't know exactly. I, I mean, comics used to be more everywhere. You know, you could buy them at drugstores and all over the place. And now you really have to seek them out. You have to go to a comic book shop and maybe there's a few bookstores that might carry a few kind of the main, very mainstream ones. So they're kind of almost hard to find. Um, but uh, yeah, it's strange because, you know, the Avengers is one of the how, how many billions did the Avengers make? And the comics are selling probably, you know, 50,000, I don't know, 60,000. So uh, it's nowhere near what comics were selling uh, 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, it, so I don't, I don't quite understand. It's not translating at all. So uh, it's interesting how comics have now become sort of a loss leader for Marvel and DC uh, to keep, you know, coming up with ideas for movies. 
and so uh, I have a. Oh, sorry. I got distracted by all this barking and dogs, and I was like, "Crap! I forgot my idea." Uh, not my idea. My question. In the midst of all that, like, yes, they don't translate over. You said, "Well, what do you think of this?" Um, let's say there's a new Guardians of the Galaxy movie that's coming out, the Volume Three. All right. Yeah. So we put out four different, like, because there's like, like, there's like five or six different Guardians of the Galaxy comic book runs going on, you know? So you put out three or four of them at the movie theater. And they don't have to stock it. The local comic book store can come and stock it, so on and so forth. Um, what do you what do you think that would do for the industry? You think that would help the industry a little bit? Um, it? You know, it's funny. We Dark Horse tried that kind of many, many years ago. In a very strange experiment, they had me write an adaptation of the movie Big, and they wanted that with Tom Hanks, and they wanted that to sell in movie theaters. And the idea was to sell gajillions of them in movie theaters, but they couldn't get movie theaters to take them, or the few, I guess the few that did, the comics would get all beat up, and no, nobody would want them. And so it, it just turned out to be... <laughs> I don't know about a disaster, but it was not a, it didn't work. And I, I know they've tried a few times. Uh, it, it seems to me there'd be a synergy there between, you know, putting a comic book rack somewhere. But I think the problem is, is collectors want them really nice. And if you put them in a movie theater, and you're not standing there. They're not going to stay nice. And uh, the general public doesn't want to spend four or five bucks on a comic when they're spending 20 to get in the movie or 18 or whatever it costs. But to that effect, I'll tell you, in my opinion, what a better idea to do would be is if you could take, <laughs> like, um, let's say in the, in, in the case of uh, Time Cop, I'm not going to say The Mask, and I'll, I'll get to why in, in, in a reason. Or like Two Guns, when those films were in theaters, if you took the graphic novel collection and you put it behind the shelf and had it available, and hopefully offered it for like 10 bucks, because I don't think other than that, you're probably not going to sell any if you try to sell it at the cover price, but... The fact of how many you sell, you know, hopefully will level all that out. Um, I specifically don't say the mask because let's be real honest, you're taking your kids, your kid wants the mask comic, you got a problem on your hands, Mark. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly it's like he's not shooting flags in this. He's shooting bullets and literally shoving, you know, like oh, fingers yeah. and like up people's rectums and like yeah it was it was way rougher for all y'all out there that don't know i hi if you're a fan of the movie the mask i highly recommend checking out the comic book if you're you know into things that are a little twisted um <laughs> By the way, some of that stuff's in the early scripts so uh, um before i before i came on the first script for the mask was this very dark horror movie oh uh, that, that was exactly what you're talking about. Real people getting mowed down with real machine guns and left and right. Although the movie has a little of that. Um, and the guys really getting the fenders where they shouldn't go and all that kind of stuff. So, it, uh, you know, what I did when my, my pass at it really was to, to add some of the humor. And uh, ended up adding the dog, Milo. And uh, the Cuban Pete sequence is mine. And... Uh, you know, I, I don't want to take credit for all of it by any means, but, you know, I added these bits that I think helped it. So, um, so anyway. Oh, well, no, no, no. I think, I think you're certainly great. right in that. Yeah, I think you're certainly right in that because I know Milo was like that whole sequence where he had the mask on. I'm positive that was a point that helped sell that film. You know, just that cue cut. Let me yeah. ask you this, though. Based on, I mean, because when that came out, it was the early 90s, correct? Right. Okay. Um, I thought I wanted to say around 93, 94. I'm honestly not positive off the top of my head. <laughs> um, but based on how the market was then compared to how it was now, and you know, you've got Deadpool, you've got the Suicide Squad, you got this. Do you think it's possible they could go back and make a mask film that's closer to the comic book and it be successful? Yeah, actually, I think they could. I, I think the, the issue there is the fear I suspect the studio has of making one without Jim Carrey. And I don't know if he wants to do it. Now, it's sort of like the fear of making an Aliens movie without Sigourney Weaver. 
you know, they finally got over that kind of, but uh, it's, it's, I think their imaginations get kind of squeezed by how they could expand these uh, franchises by thinking they're really dependent on one character or one guy playing the character like the mask. However, I will say they did that with Son of the Mask. And I don't know if you ever saw that. And uh, I don't want yeah, to. Yeah. You I've, saw it? I've not seen it. Actually, I, man, look. Um, I'm not. I'm not trying to sit here and crap on any films in any capacity. Uh, but whatever. I'm gonna give my honest opinion. I am the unknown factor. Um, I, I think I tried to watch it, and <laughs> then the key word is I tried to because I because I love the mask. Uh, as far as like I love how Jim Carrey portrayed it. I think it was a good, a, a it was a good rendition that wasn't as dark and violent as the comic. I love the comic book. I mean, literally like. You see, I've got I've got stuff here that's current of the mask. I, right. I've I've read a chunk of the mask that's far beyond what the original I think eight arcs or eight issue arc was, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I don't remember actually, but probably right, I think it, I think it was right around there. I might I might be a little off on one way or another. Um, but yeah, I've read far beyond that, man, and and just I, I feel like in that film, like in in the original mask, there was a bit of that darkness. You know what I mean? Like there wasn't a lot of it, but there was enough where you could see that, oh, so this thing is screwing with him and kind mm-hmm. of taking away his inhibition to where he's just like, fuck it. And, you know, doing whatever right. he wants. Um, Going for yeah. Yeah. The Jamie Kennedy, in my opinion, now, again, I didn't make it through all of it. I might be wrong. It very much lost all of that. So let's flip this back, man. Your favorite book as oh, a kid oh, was, was fantastic. Hold on, bro. Oh, oh, what? what? Hold on. Oh man, I had a good oh, flip. No. This better be good. <laughs> no, you just you just wanted to keep talking and going on a tangent. No, um, bro, I was gonna take it yes, to a whole different question. Yes, just ask yes, away. Yes. Yes. All right. No, I had a statement about the mask. That, that movie you were talking about, and whatnot. It wasn't bad. They just went and tried to replicate the full humor of the first one. That's what they really went for in the second film. It wasn't so it wasn't like bad, but it wasn't. You could watch it once and be like, "Hey, you know what? That was an experience." You know what I'm saying? Like, and and, and be good for the rest of your existence. <laughs> well, That's a- so, to that to that ilk, let me let me flip it, man, because uh, I feel that way about most of the Fantastic Four films, except the ones that I also couldn't make it through. And I see your favorite comic as a kid Jesus. was the Fantastic Four by Jack. And Stan, yeah. uh, shout out to Stan Lee, my greatest influence as a hip hop artist for real. That's a fact. <laughs> um, I'm curious, what are your opinions of the Fantastic Four films that have been released? Um, uh, this is going to sound bad. I don't think I've seen any of them. Um, so uh, I, I may have seen a bit of the Silver Surfer one. Um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of Marvel movies. Uh, at some point, I just got kind of tired of seeing Marvel movies. Is that terrible? Um, I've no. Seen, I've seen a whole pile of them. And uh, Stan and Jack's Fantastic Four is my Fantastic Four. And I think in my head, I've got my image of what Ben Grimm is, and the thing looks like. And, you know, the movies are trying to replicate that. And, uh, again, I've seen a little bit of them. But I think the magic was in the comics. And I think that's a hard one to capture. That that sort of, it's like, it's capturing, um, like trying to capture uh, Spider-Man. But Sam, when Sam Raimi did it and really found that way to do Spider-Man right. I mean, to find the kind of wit, but also the he- the character and stuff. Um, and so, it's, I'm, again, I'm not putting down those movies because I haven't seen them. I, I what little I've seen of them, I just went. You know, I want to just keep my memory of the comics. That's that's what I love. And uh, okay, so Mark, they're terrible, all of them. I'm just going to say it right <laughs> off the bat. Okay, so I don't save some time. <laughs> look, 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 man. They're the the Fantastic Four, and, and my main problem, or my main opinion, as far as what the problem with them was, is um, <clears throat> they always try to jump to Doom as the first villain. You know what I mean? Right. Where I'm sorry, Doom is a Thanos level character. You know what I mean? You need to build to that. Uh, do you intend to see the one that Marvel's about to release? Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I'll see it. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably. It, this is the the not the one by the other studios. Uh, I yeah, think, yeah. I forget this is making, actually Disney. Yeah, Disney's Marvel Studios is actually touching on this, which means is their casting is probably going to be. Uh, all right, it's a thousand times better. All right, the, the casting for their studio is par none. I haven't yet to be like, you know what? That was just a bad choice it, because they, they haven't failed. All right. right. Um, but um, I don't, I don't think it's going to be bad. I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be cool. I, you know, again, I like what the Marvel universe guys are doing with stuff. And uh, I've seen most of those. But, uh, well, um, let me ask you as a fan of oh, uh, crap. Stan and hey. Jack's, but uh, Hardaway's over there getting chased by a dog. Don't mind him. Uh, he's not eating anything, though, which is fairly surprising. Um, but as a fan of Stan and Jack's Fantastic Four, who would you like to see as the first villain in that film? Because I don't, personally, I don't think it should be Doom. Well, they've done it, too. I mean, well, that, so, too. But I just yeah, think I mean, Doom is somebody yeah. you build to. Look, I... I don't know if it would make sense. I mean, this is almost a Thanos level thing too, but Galactus is very cool. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think now back to the Stan and Lee books. You know what I what I loved about their books was they had adventures where like one of my favorite runs they did was when uh, the thing got taken by aliens off to another world. And it was a four issue run, I think a little bit later in the, uh, in the series, like around the eighties. Isn't that, are you sure that's not the negative zone where the nihilist takes them? Well, that's probably another one. There's one where he's fighting the uh, gladiator guy that's a robot, and uh, Ben Grimm is fighting him. And boy, we're such fans here. Anyway, he's fighting this robot guy. (laughs) And uh, um, the Fantastic Four has to find him, and they go through hell, heaven and earth, trying to find him in this other world where he's been taken. And I actually have the original art on the wall in front of me of the page where they find him. And uh, they all give him a hug. And I'm looking at it right now. It's one of my favorite pages of art. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it inspires me. I have two pages of the Fantastic Four right in front of me yeah. by uh, Herbie and Lee. So, um, Mark, you made me a little jealous. I can't lie. Because look. When I was 15, I did have the privilege to meet Stan Lee. I, I never met Jack, unfortunately, because he just passed long before I ever started going to conventions. Uh, but I did get to meet Stan Lee before the whole MCU and everything blew up and started. So it was more of a, like, I was actually able to have a moment, talk to him. And, like, he took a picture with me, even though his agent was telling him, come on, we got to catch a flight. Dude told his agent to take the photo. I'll always remember Stan Lee for that. I'm like, that's the mentality to have right Right. there. You know, like, no, this is my fan. Shut up and take the picture. You're my agent, asshole. It was, it was just perfect. You know, uh, I did a book called the American for dark horse. That was my very first book. And uh, Stan Lee wrote me a fan letter that, that I got for around issue five or six, where he said, and I still remember, he said, this is Captain America done right. And, uh, you know, you want to talk about making a guy. <laughs> it blew my mind, man. You wow. know, I still got the letter here somewhere. Okay. Um, I, I just so have I to say. i it later. So, say yeah. thank you. But. I, I just have to say, like, firstly, I kind of felt that way when I got an email from you. You saying you were a fan of the podcast. And I'm like, are you shitting me? What? No. I read this man's work when I was in my teenage years, right? And plus watched it and all of this. And it's just like, like you were, you created the Cuban Pete sequence, bro. I used to sing that with the film oh my way back God. in the day. Like, Why didn't you buy the soundtrack? Right. So <laughs> I, I, dude, I don't think they, if, if they put us on the soundtrack now, it would have to be the darker version. I'm going to tell you that <laughs> right now, Mark. Because it would be, you know, I'm Cuban <laughs> Pete. I'm here to cut off your feet. Cause I don't give a fuck. <laughs> da, 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 da. You know, like it would get. It'd See, be like I can I, do that version. I can keep the ha- I can keep that happy goofy version and whatnot because the man still pulled out Tommy guns and let people have it. So, um, it's just that they didn't really show all of that in the movie because man, the know, flags came out. What are you talking about? He never really shot uh, anybody. Flags came out. 
Well, old dude shot people. You know he would have if he had to. It would have just been flags hitting everybody. Uh, the whole thing is, is this. New thing. All right. Whole new ordeal. Okay. So you wrote pretty much like. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Wait. You're trying to do a whole new. Wait, wait, wait. Stuff. Shut up. No, hold up. Before you cut to the topic, <laughs> I just got to say, based on what you've said, as far as what Stan Lee said about the American, um, I, I want to read it more. And that's after Doug Wagner, who's the guy that wrote Vinyl and Plastic. I don't know if you're familiar with those. Told me that that is one of his favorite comics. We just had Doug on a little while ago. He you did, guys can check me. that he episode out. That, um, wow. hey, man, he didn't say that to you. He private messaged me that. And Tardaway, what are you hacking my Facebook? Yes. We need to have a conversation after the show, damn it. Um, <laughs> There's a reason why I buy a fire, bro. But but yeah, I just but, I just uh, wanted to let you know that, Mark. Based on that, I honestly I want to read that even more now because it's a piece that I was familiar with, but I've never read. And I've yeah, I'm so I know what I'm picking up at Comic Book University this week if they've got the graphic available. <laughs> it's out there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, now Hardaway, you can ask your question. I had to compliment the man and let him know that Doug, like I said, who just currently wrote Plastic Vinyl and is writing plush right now, you can go pick up the probably first two issues at this point. <clears throat> had also given the man a great compliment. So go ahead, bro. Do what you do. I had to say that, though. Uh, well done. Yeah, it was nicely executed. All right, look. So you wrote some of like founding sci-fi horror in, in the it, it, like 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 from like now for nowadays and whatnot because there's a lot of things that are uh based off of like the xenomorph and the predator and i can give you a big huge one right now for instance warhammer 40k the tyranids their their entire whole entire everything is based <laughs> off of the xenomorph all right how how does it feel to like inspire so many different stories and different essentially different writers to just continue on the world in which you like basically help found? And for that matter, to take the world of alien and aliens and be one of the first people, if not, I, I might be, I might be, I think you're the first person actually that was able to ever to extend that universe. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Which I, oh my God, dude, I, I so wish I had my graphic novels I used to have. Mark, you, you have no idea how much I'm sitting here interviewing you. It annoys me. I still don't have those books and comics. But yeah, just how did that and that feel, both respectively? So, you know, look, it's, it's, it's strange. I mean, you know, we did those um, when, when I remember doing the first issue. And, and um, by the way, I'll just tell you how it came about. I had written the american for dark horse and i was talking to mike richardson the publisher of dark horse one day and he said we're getting the aliens franchise and you know um i wonder who could write that and i said if you give it to anyone but me i forget i think i said i'd be really angry but i think i said it's worse than that and um so they did and then um the amazing thing about that whole series was it was a time when fox didn't seem to really care what we were doing or maybe we're doing it good. And so they just stood back. I have not had that experience since, but um, both on the aliens and the first quarter, uh, I don't remember a single note from Fox about what we were doing. And uh, I just sat down and, and just started to have this kind of like stuff pour out of me and do it. And, um, you know, I look back on that. It was a real fun time. It was hard work. I don't want to say it just, you know, magically appeared, but uh, uh, especially with the, uh, well, the first series with Mark Nelson drawing it was such a great, just the book just turned out so amazingly well and his style fit it so well, black and white, creepy, drippy, nasty. Uh, and uh, so uh, if it's inspired other people, that's fantastic. I mean, uh, it, you know, uh, I, I think, at the time I wrote my three, I thought I might do another one. In fact, I was up to do another one later and it got, that got killed by Fox. So, um, you know, it's a uh, interesting world we live in, but, uh, um, it's, 
you know, look, I'm grateful they're still out. You know, I mean, they just came out again from Marvel, these giant omnibus things. So uh, I'm happy they're still out. They've gone back. It's a long story, but they changed them to fit the mythology of aliens, how it changed after Newt was killed in the third movie. Newton Hicks were both killed. My my story starred Newton Hicks, so that that was a problem as adults. And uh, so, um, but that was a great story, Mark. I just have to say that was a great story. I love how you continued that. I honestly would have. There's part of me that is a fan of that series would have kind of rather seen that than how they did Alien Three. You know what I mean? And seen it continue and actually get to Earth. And I I think it could have been far more interesting than what was done in alien three that's just my personal opinion as a fan that's okay i was discouraged by alien three just because david finch is a great director um you know everybody involved i'm sure was trying really hard to, to just kill newton in the credits i just i couldn't even believe it i didn't know that was coming so i was like i'm sitting in the theater going they did what and the whole movie just uh, from there on i was like yeah you guys so, uh, uh, but thank you. I appreciate the, the compliment. I, it was, they were super fun to write and nobody, again, it's just one of these things where without all the inter- editorial interference, uh, it felt like a better book probably came out of it than if somebody had been riding herd on me all the way. Um, so uh, it certainly made it easier. I, I did first drafts, turned them in, they drew them. That was how it worked. They never came back to me. I always just, they just went straight to the artist. That's phenomenal, man. Well, I got to know then. Um, first, great favorite film, bro. Evil Dead 2. Yeah, I, I, I've i never seen, I, I've oh, never I seen anyone question. so convincingly act like their hand was trying to kill them and pull it off. Right. So yeah, shout yeah. out to Bruce Campbell. I love that he's on your favorite actor list, too, because uh, I love oh, yeah. Bruce Campbell as an actor, man. He's I, He's done so much even beyond just playing Ash. Uh, like, I love that there's commercial, like, don't call me Ash. I can understand him not wanting to be called Ash. It's probably really annoying. It's, it's Bruce Campbell, y'all. My name is Bruce. Funny ass movie. Go check it out. But knowing that, that and then ended up later getting to work on the Evil Dead comic book, man, what was that like? On the, oh, the Evil Dead comic? Yeah. Like, yeah that was you, great. Did you get a yeah, lot of notes was- back on that or did you find it was the same sequence of events? No. No, same sequence. I, I, but, you know, look, I was working from the movie, so I was essentially expanding the movie a little bit, the first movie, um, which definitely has no I, no, no assault on Sam Raimi or Bruce Campbell or Rob Tapper or anybody, but there's some holes in it. So, um, or some character stuff where you kind of want to know, well, who were these guys really when they went out to the cabin? So, you know, that was fun to sort of expand it on it a little bit. Um, and then I got very lucky again with an incredible artist on that, with John Bolton, who's just painted an amazing book. Um, he made it made it look amazing. So uh, yeah. that was fun. I, you know, I, I had worked with these guys, Sam and Rob and Bruce, several times, actually, in the past. And um, so when Dark Horse had the rights, I guess they approved me to do it. And I think that's because they knew I was a fan of the Evil Dead, a real fan. And uh, that uh, it was probably more like the uh, the uh, aliens thing, where I said, if you let anyone else do it, I'll be very angry. So uh, that was fun to do. Um, Again, that just came out again, too, in a hardback. So it's amazing how all these things keep being put out. But I think that one, because the art is so amazing, will, will survive quite a while. It's, uh, but the movies are great. Look, Evil Dead 2 is my favorite movie of all time. Uh, I saw the theater when it came out. I went, this is amazing. Uh, want me to tell you a story about how this Evil Dead kicked off my yeah. movie career? So Evil Dead 2, favorite movie of all time. Mike Richardson at the time had just started Dark Horse. And um, I would call him up. I'd say, Mike, you got to see Evil Dead 2. It's the greatest movie ever made. He said, ah, this piece of shit, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And I go, dude, you got to see it. You got to see it. <coughs> finally, I get a call one night. He says, I just saw it. It is the greatest movie ever made. <laughs> and uh, we got to find Sam Raimi. And I said, you bet we do. And so uh, we, uh, Mike, looked up Sam Raimi. Long story short, they ended up producing Time Cop. So um, 
you, there you go. <laughs> so, there's, there's about four years in there, but uh, um, they, uh, this is the greatest and movie then, of all time. Well, and, and then we like develop other films that are yeah. just as great. And then I love the fact that you went on to work on uh, My Name is Bruce, especially just what I based on what I said. Because I knew I'm Bruce Campbell. Like, that was the whole premise of that film was they were kidnapping him thinking he was Ash. Right. You know? Right. And, 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 like, I loved that whole concept, man. What was it like to play with that in that aspect where you're, you're you know, playing in the real world? But you're like, oh, these kids are so dumb, for lack of a better term. They they think this dude is literally the chosen one when he's just an actor. It was, that was fun. I, 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 uh, Dark Horse had started a low budget film unit, and they were asking if there's something we could do for Bruce. And and I said, because uh, Mike was friends with Bruce at that time too, and I said, yeah, I got one. And I sort of pitched him this story, and that was it. And so. I uh, I remember writing that while I was working on Battlestar Galactica, so that was a very yeah. uh, and uh, I, I it's very funny to me it's funny that uh, we won a Peabody for Battlestar Galactica, and we went to New York to go to the Peabody Awards, which was kind of amazing, and then I flew back to Oregon to the set of My Name Is Bruce to watch Bruce kick a guy in a wheelchair out into the middle of traffic. <laughs> and, and, the movie. and I thought, boy, I, I found a way to vary it up here. <laughs> Deep body award winning to Bruce kicking a guy in a wheelchair into traffic. So how did you find it? I'm curious. No, okay, shall be boring. Yeah, how do you, how do you do it to where you balance that to where you have the side that is completely, you know, goofy, violent, and all this, and then you have that real serious, you know, like, how, do you find it a problem to balance those? You ever find yourself, like, crossing over, like, oh, I wrote something that's funny and screwy in this script, and that's, that's, that goes over in this script. Right. Um, yeah, actually, a little bit. Sometimes, if you're working on a horror project, um, you want it to be horror. You know, you don't really want a lot of levity, unless, you know, it's Evil Dead too. Um but, uh, and I discovered early on that when you're talking about a project with somebody, like a horror project, and you, you, you intersperse it with jokes, like just to make it a lively, more presentation, they don't like that. So I learned really quick, you know, to separate them, you know. Battlestar was a very heavy show. Um, My Name is Bruce was a comic book brought to life, which was fun. Um, not in the pejorative sense, in the real, like, this is really just goofy fun. Um, and, uh, so, uh, I wish I could do more comedy, actually. I've done a lot. Well, I did Ash versus Evil Dead, which was, um, <laughs> sort of punched my, you know, that was, that was a bucket list thing where I really wanted that gig, you know, and third season it opened up and I said, you got to let me be on Ash versus Evil Dead. And so I was, and I got to finally write Ash for the movies with Bruce saying it. So that was that was uh, that was amazing. So yeah, was, was, you know. So yeah, and, no, uh, that, yeah that's again, I, I appreciate that because Ash versus Evil Dead was amazing. I am honestly kind of sad it was canceled. The whole thing. I, I wish it would have gone on longer. I would have liked to have seen it continue and just go. All right, so line. but here's oh, a, here's Harley, a big go, question, dude. brother. I'm sorry. Yeah, you ask a lot of questions. I want to ask one. That's why I said you go, because I know I ask a lot of questions. Yeah, you just... You, Look, you, I can't you lie, bro. I'm yeah. a fan of the man's work, bro. I've read a lot of it from, like, dude sends me an email talking about I'm a fan of your podcast. And I'm like, bro, I've been a fan right, of yours since right. I was a teenager. So, you know, but I ask the right. question, Hardaway. I'm sorry. I forget there's two hosts. We, we got we got, we got to get you a giant-ass a giant FB logo. And what now for your chest? Wait, him or me? Fanboy. You. <laughs> oh. you fanboy. Look, look, man. Um, I mean, no, I just look. appreciate the man's work <laughs> and everything he's done. You fuck off, Hardaway, right? Now, hey, I'm going to take he, the next question said, just because you said me, that shit, I'm right? Definite so, fan. Look, There's other people in this look, world, too. You don't got to be the only one. So look, look, you're going to fanboy on something. I don't want to hear it, man. Let me put some valiant people in here. Uh, you're not shut the hell up. Here's the question of the film. 
from about the 80s. Do you think the predator would be actually capable of hunting, uh, hunting, hunting, not haunting, because that would be horrible, but um, hunting ash? A predator? Oh, yes. He'd tear Ash's head off. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's that, that, that's not a fair fight. Um, Ash would put up a fight. You know, he would he would improvise and use his shotgun and his chainsaw hand, and you know, he he could improvise. But uh, no, I don't know, man. I think the predator would would uh, that's that uh, unless he had a real, you know, like when Batman fought Superman in that uh, movie where. They're fighting each other all the time. <laughs> Batman, Superman, whatever it was. You know, he had to put on the giant tough guy suit so that when Superman punched him, it wouldn't cave his head in. So Bruce would need some tough guy suit like that. I'll tell you, my armor. the whole thing I think, like if that fight went down, the only reason Ash would lose is because he'd never realized, oh, if I put down all my weapons and just fight with the chainsaw, this thing will just fight with this little blade and I could probably cut its head off. I don't think he'd ever figure that out and he'd always be trying to shoot it until it just plasma cannoned his ass and was like, dude, I'm done with you. And, See, and that's the, the end of that. The reason, the reason why I think Ash would win, all right, and I, wanna, I understand I'm on the opposite end of this spectrum right now, but the reason why I think he would win is because Ash is one of the goofiest entity slayers ever created which means the predator being in the vicinity of this man uh -uh. none of that none of that oh, mark you here we're done with that conversation i don't know where he was going with it but no, i no, want to no, know no, bro no 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 my cat like cat uh, uh random cat came and attacked my cat uh, so that's what that was. Sorry about that. That's why I said sorry about that. Feral um, cats. No, but the reason why I think Ash will win is because every time somebody tries to kill Ash, some, they mess up. Every entity messes up, which means the predator's going to mess up and Ash is going to capitalize on that. And he's so stupid smart that he's going to stupidly find out a way like, oh, yeah, the Predator doesn't fuck with people that have weapons and whatnot because the gun's going to get shot out of his head. That's going to be the goofy mess up. The gun gets shot out of his head, and he pulls out the chainsaw. He's like, the boomstick's gone. This is all I got. What do you think the Predator's going to do? Well, that's what well, I said. If the Predator went to his wall, yeah, no, yeah no, the Predator would be saying. screwed. Like that, but, that's how the goofiness will lead to that. That's I, 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 I can see that, man. And he is the chosen one, let's all be honest, up in this room. But... On that note, really, dude, you're talking about Mark the the 1980 Swamp Thing movie. What no, I'm talking about Swamp Thing, the TV show that I did. Oh, okay, which is okay, also okay. amazing. Okay, never mind. I okay, okay, okay. Uh, I think you said best TV show. So. Oh yeah, I mean, I, yep. there's a line because I'm honestly, it's an open ended like and movie TV, but a big giant ego put that Swamp Thing on there, but. Uh, the Swamp Thing is good. Swamp Thing is good. I really did like Fallen Skies though, and Heroes. Like I, I really. I'm trying to. I'm trying really, to remember if I watched that Swamp Thing show, man, because I remember the original movie. Because what? There, weren't there two movies? I think. Yep. Back in the yeah. '80s. Now, oh wait, wasn't it the TV series where they introduced the other characters that transmutated to some degree? Uh. Or am uh, I thinking the movies? You're thinking, I think, of the other series, which there was a like a long half hour series back in the nineties that uh, Swamp Thing was fighting uh, arcane and all kinds of werewolves and different characters like that. Mine was no, he's, more on the Alan yeah. Moore, uh, um, Steve Bissett, Tottleman run from the early eighties. Um, I'm going to have uh, to go look that up, Mark. I apologize for the fact that I haven't seen right. it. It was on the CW, uh, which I don't know if it's, I guess it still exists. And uh, the, uh, I think it's streaming on the CW app. Or you can get it on uh, Amazon, all those places. You can the always internet. get it. The internet exists, and we'll just leave it to that, Mark. Ah, yeah, you you know. can find it. Yeah, no yeah. I, I definitely will be looking into that, man. Um, you think people are aware that that's a comic book character? I think 
Uh, some are because it's so fantastic. There's a monster, you know. I think uh, some are, and uh, you know, the run that that Alan Moore did is so great. Still is great, fantastic piece of work. Probably my second favorite comic series after the Fantastic Four. Um, that uh, I think a lot a lot of people have read it, given how famous he was for Watchmen and stuff like that. And uh, so. I think I think more are of that, but you know, again, it's a deal where the Swamp Thing books didn't pick up in sales just because the show was out. And it just doesn't seem to correlate. That just, that, that kind of like saddens me, man. As somebody that, like, I mean, I've read comics since I could read. It's, and I know for a fact that they've helped people as far as just you know being able to read and their comprehension level. Why do you think it is? that society oh those are just funny books like even now and i mean like that said with with books like plastic vinyl saga like the alien book books that you wrote i wouldn't recommend for anyone under 13 or 14 years of age you know what i mean i mean they're not these these aren't books for children not to say there aren't comic books for children there are plenty of comic books for children uh, about 80 comic books release every week so everybody knows if you want to read, I guarantee there's a comic book out there you will enjoy in some capacity, whether it's something like Matt Hawkins' Swingers, which is all about sex, to, uh, you know, The Mask, which is ultra-violent. I mean, there's there's so many yeah. different choices. <laughs> Why do you think there's still that stigma, and especially if you look at things like Watchmen and V for Vendetta? You know what I mean? Like, how how do people not understand the literary level that has been reached within the comic book industry, and they're and they're, they're funny books. Um, yeah, I, I I can't I don't really have a super answer to that. I mean, you know, I mean the honest truth is a lot of comics, um, are so inbred, and I, you know I'm not trying to put down comics, but you got to have to know so much continuity to understand what's going on. You can't pick up a random issue of, you know, pick pick, pick your title of choice, an X Men. And have any idea really what's going on if you haven't been following along for a while. So I think there's something that alienates people there. That's not talking about thinking about them as, you know, children's books or whatever. But, um, uh, you know, and uh, it's like a lot of things. There's there's a few great ones. And then there's, you know, a lot of stuff that's good, but not, you know, not hugely great. And um, it, it's tough to stick out in this world, too, and make something that, that people really want to jump on. Now... The truth is there's books that sell millions of copies, but they're like manga and anime and stuff that, uh, you know, it's not mainstream superhero books. It's, you know, children, it's not even children's books. It's adult books that are done in comic form, but they're not done in any superhero type way or horror even or that. There might be some fantasy in them. Um, manga is its own. I am a, I am a huge uh, manga anime fan, and I can tell you that they have a genre for everything. Yeah. Everything. Superheroes, horror, like their horror is absolutely horrifying. Yep. And because they allow their people to do a lot more. A lot more. Now, mind you, you might not be able to see all of it, but when it comes to them talk about it and the uh, the artistic viewing of what happens to people do this, it's woo. Oh yeah, I've seen but, some. I've seen some. <laughs> it's something. Yeah. You don't yeah, want to... I, like, yeah, when it, it just, depending on the age, that's all yeah. it is. It depends on the age rating. It depends on how, how far they will go in manga. Whereas in, you can get the most MA comic book in America and it's not going to hold a flame to it. And, and it can be, and it's in color. It, it's in color and it, it won't, that you won't, bro. Like, try, I will send you some unknown that will make you go what the f is going on so, you better you better send it to me in physical form bro you know my opinion on that and then let me ask you that mark i mean because you're someone that's seen the evolution from it going to everything was on the printed page to now right. uh, so much is available on the web what's your opinion on that and how it's affected the industry overall Well, I get royalties every month uh, because of uh, the digital <laughs> from my DC books, so I'm happy about that. Um, 
you know, look, I think we change things change. I love printed materials. I mean, I'm I, I'm I'm so old school that you know, look, I think they should be on fairly crappy newsprint and you know <laughs> the whole the whole nine yards. That that's how I remember comics. And in fact, uh, when uh, who was it? Tastian just put out these books of Spider Man, I bought it, and it's because it's shot from the original pages of the comic, so it's still got the exact it's the pages of the comic just blown up big, cleaned up a little bit. And uh, um, that's how I like reading comics. And, you know, I have, I still have some comics and, you know, like I have the Fantastic Four set. And, and I, I, I tell you, if you look at those, the printing is terrible. I don't know who is printing these things. It's just terrible. <laughs> uh, I mean, you but I have an affection for that because that's how I, uh, that's, those are the books that I loved when I was a kid. And, uh, so, uh, uh, so I love the printed page, but that said, I have too much stuff. And so I am getting a lot of stuff on uh, digital and I have one of those great big iPads. And so it's easy to read them and, um, you know, I don't have more stuff. So, uh, what can I say? I'm well, agnostic it, on this thing. I mean, I, I get that, man. And you say, uh, obviously you can tell with everything you've done, you, you had a great deal of patience working through everything you've done. Um, I mean, because it's what led you to be able to, you know, work on Ash versus Evil Dead, as well as all the, like, things that you were a fan of, you got to touch on at a later time. And it's because you had patience with it, man. Do you ever find difficulty, like, especially if you're dealing with executives or something like that, to where, where you don't want to have patience? And what is the thing you do in that moment to make sure you don't do something that bites you in the ass? I think exactly that. <laughs> don't do something that will bite you in the ass. <laughs> like, man, I better I, shut up. I don't want to bit in the ass later. All right. I, I'm very, you know, I've lo- it's not even something I learned. I just have that personality. I don't know why. Which is I'm very, you know, oops. Oh, oh. I lose you? No. Yeah. Do a quick yep. cut and we're back live. You're froze, but. <laughs> but, but where were we? I can't bloody well remember. Uh, oh, the patience with the virtue. Uh, yeah, patience, yeah, yeah. Not, 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 not uh, doing things that by. It's it just is. Like that no, little physical. interruption. That, that little inter- I didn't throw the computer across the room. I just waited for it to clear up. That's my personality. Um, you know, I, just, I, I just, I've always like, you know, I've written the angry emails where I'm just so angry I want to come out of my chair, and then I, I always wait a day and I look at them in the morning and I go, holy cow, I'm glad I didn't send that. So it's, it's, uh, it's just I've I, again, it's just something that's in me, and I think it's one reason I've been able to work a while um, is that I haven't blown up every bridge that I've come to. Uh, with explosive temper or something. Now, I've worked with a lot of combustible people, and they've worked a lot, too. So uh, they are, uh, um, how do I put this? They can be less fun to work with. Well, but, without naming um, any names, Mark, okay. because I don't want to get you in trouble with nobody. Some of them are dead. It, well, well, it, could stay, <laughs> it, it still it. might bite you in the ass, bro. You never know. The children come after you, something, this, right. that, whatever. Just what's the most interesting story you have of someone just being complicated? Oh, God, I have so many. But uh, the I think, you know, (laughs) an interesting one was I was working with a guy who was a very seasoned television professional. And we had been put together uh, to come up with a TV pilot. And uh, I was on Battlestar then. And, you know. I was kind of like, man, I just want a Peabody. I'm feeling pretty good. So, or the show did, you know. So um, I'm working with this guy and we came up with this idea, or I think I had, I want to say I had the idea and then we worked on it together. Um, Then I went off to write the script and then I came back to to hear what he thought of it. And it was two hours of sitting there with him telling me how horrible it was. Page by page, just going through it. I said, this is stupid. This is terrible. I hadn't had a meeting like that in 20 years. And I, I remember kind of nodding and smiling. And I had this out-of-body experience where I'm just kind of looking at myself, looking at him. 
and I'm going like, wow, he's just reaming the hell out of me here. <laughs> and uh, um, we got done. He said something like, now you need to think really hard if you want to keep working on this project or whatever. And I'm thinking, well, I'm the reason the project exists, but yeah, I'll think really hard. And even before I was out the door of that office, I was on the phone to my agent saying, get me out of this. I don't care what it takes. <laughs> <laughs> but I never want to see that guy again. And uh, so that was one of the more memorable uh, encounters. We had actually, we had sold the pilot, which is insane. The guy, he was something. So, and I had a couple other ones like that, that were people that were just very, very angry. I went for one guy, he was the angriest man alive. I, I've never seen anything like it. He'd be angry at everything, you know? He'd be angry at like the computer screen, you know? He'd just be going like, this computer screen, God damn it. Then you'd go like, okay, okay. And then he'd be like, period, put a period there, not a comma, a period, a period. And you'd go, easy buddy, <laughs> stuff like that, so. Jeez. All right, let's do the flip side of that, right? Who's the yep. person, and you can mention this name, obviously, because you're not going <laughs> to. Absolutely. Yeah, you're not going to make nobody mad. Who's the person that was the greatest pleasure to work with that when you look back, you're like, wow, that dude was so much cooler than I ever expected, and, and why? Oh. Why? Well, I, I could name several, but uh, uh, Ron Moore from Battlestar was amazing. Uh, he was the showrunner and co creator with David Icke, and he's. He's uh, he's he's an amazing guy to work with. He's uh, really open and easy to work with, and, and you know supportive of crazy ideas because we did some crazy stuff on Battlestar, and uh, just a great that was a good experience. I, I really enjoyed that. And then um, I think uh, I've worked with a lot of actors I really liked, and uh, um, I've worked with. A lot of comic book people I really liked. Mark Nelson again on Aliens was great. Uh, I worked with um, who else did I love? Oh God, I'm going on blank now. I have to look at my books. Um, <laughs> Can't, man, I so want to. I, I so just want to ask, like, because I, I'm a I'm a big fan of Bruce Campbell's. How oh, was yeah. he to work with, man? I gotta know. He is. Uh, very fun and collaborative. Oh, my name is Bruce. Uh, we sat down for a couple of days and just were kind of laughing. He was adding jokes and I was adding jokes. And so that was really fun. Um, he, uh, you know, he's, uh, he wants to do things his own way. And so he's in a lot of, you know, big movies, but not, you know, the, I think what he loves doing are independent movies, kind of see to your pants movies. Uh, my name is Bruce was sort of one of those. It wasn't super cheap, but it was, you know, a low budget film that he got to direct and kind of help write and um, and all that sort of thing. Um, he's fun. He Yeah. So he's fun in that way. And I look, I, I first met him on Army of Darkness. So, you know, we go way back. And uh, um, when I was doing working on Time Cop with uh, Ramey, he invited me to the set. And so. I saw him in full ash regalia back then, which was amazing. And uh, um, if you remember uh, Army of Darkness, it's the scene where he's being lowered into a pit of uh, demons by the medieval guys. And oh, you were there the about. day they shot that, Mark? Yeah, well, I think it was more than one day, but I was there the day they um, were shooting. Yeah, I'm, I'm so jealous, bro. I'm so jealous. It was great. That's that's oh my gosh like 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 really that are green with envy yeah i mean i mean a little bit man you can call me swamp thing whatever <laughs> you can give me an envy too I'm all right so what nothing hardaway ask a question oh okay um, <laughs> all right if you uh if you had the opportunity to work with any character that you haven't worked on and not the Fantastic Four, mm -hmm. all right, um, what character would you, or characters, team, oh. would you write a story about? Oh, yeah. No, I. that's an easy one. Um, I would love to do a Bizarro uh, uh, story. I got to do one Bizarro story when I was doing Superman, which was my most fun uh, 
Superman comic that I did um because i just love bizarro i've loved it since i was a kid um i don't know why there isn't a bizarro sitcom or a bizarro movie <laughs> I, I just why aren't we on bizarro planet i don't do not understand it <laughs> so it's funny because i get asked this i was asked this with, with people that were working on swamp thing and the other guys are saying oh i'd want to write adam strange or you know i'd want to do the phantom stranger series or whatever um and i said no bizarro the second one, who I really like, and he's been done some, but I don't think, he's, whatever, I, I, it would be fun to do a show with, about him, is The Martian Manhunter. He's always also been a, a real, uh, I'm a fan of that guy. Um, my very first story for DC was revisiting his origin for a, for a short story that turned out really well. I was happy with that one. So. All right. Well, let's ask then, Mark. Let's say you get the chance to do that, right? Do some fan casting for us, Mark. Who are you going to make Manhunter? Who are you going to make Bizarro? I want to know who you cast in both of those as if you were able to run well, the show on either of them respectively. Look, if he's still around, Bruce Campbell as Superman, Bizarro Superman, would be perfect. Um, trying to think who uh, would be <laughs> Bizarro Lois. And look, look, can I just say, on the note of Bruce Campbell, ain't nobody got the chin to play Superman like that man does. And the hair. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah that too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, really... Why is that's that's honestly one of those actors I never understood why he never made a list unless it was just his choice because he's like, look, I don't want to deal with this chicanery. I'm good over here. You know, if it was his choice, I totally understand. But there's part of me that never understood why that man did not go farther. Like I said, and that's from watching everything from Bubba Hotep. My name is Bruce. I mean, I could sit here and list the crap a little bit when he was on burn notice, you know. I mean, yeah. the dude's done a Don't lot. Kind of He's really been busy, but um, you know, I, uh, I, I don't know if he feels like Ash. I, I don't want to speak for him. I don't know if he feels like Ash is sort of a curse. I mean, it's obviously a blessing because it put him on the map. But uh, um, you know, it sort of follows him around, and. Uh, you know, he's developed this persona where you want him in the right part. I've seen him in straight roles. He's very good. But there's a part of you, a part of me anyway, that wants to see him, you know, pull out a chainsaw or something. I don't know. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, if he sees this, he'll hate me. So, um, but. Uh, Bruce, don't yeah, hate Mark. Just great. come on the questionnaire. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you're just. It sucks, but sometimes you're typecasted, and it's it's not saying that you couldn't act and do a different type of movie or style. It's just that the one that you're really freaking good at, yeah. So let's, is this let's, role. Let's let's flip this on this head, man. I want to I want to take it to a, a comic book level, right, Mark? Yeah. Let's let's say you just you you're working on a book. And you can handpick an artist. Nobody you've worked with, man. Somebody you haven't, Ooh. right? Out of the industry. Like, what artist would you like to work with that you haven't? Hmm. Uh, boy, that's a good question. There's, a, you know, there's a lot of artists that do with their own stuff. It would never work with a writer. So, um, so if it's totally fantasy, uh, you know, uh, gosh, let me look around at my walls. Who <laughs> do I love? Um, Who do I have original pieces of art from, Mark says? Yeah. Well, most of them are dead, unfortunately. We don't do we uh, don't do that here, Mark. I'm sorry. There yeah, are no I resurrection know. spells. I, I do not possess the Necronomicon, nor would I open it if I did. I'm not that dumb. Look, if you could bring him back from the dead, Steve Ditko, I, I would love to do one with him. Uh, and, well, look. For that matter, I'd love. I wish I could have worked with Jack Kirby, who I did meet once or twice. Oh nice wow, guy. very nice guy and super talented guy. Um, I'm trying to think of guys that I almost worked with. I mean, John Bolton was great. Uh, that's a tough one. I'm not familiar with too many of the brand new artists, um, and uh, you know, it's funny. Twenty years ago, I'd go to San Diego Con. I knew everybody. And uh, if I go now, it's like I know nobody. <laughs> so, you know, well, let's I know it. more actors than I know comic book guys. Yeah, let's flip it to that, man. What do you think when you go to San Diego Comic Con now? Because obviously, you went to the Comic Con when it when it was a comic book convention, 
Yep. You know what I mean? You go to San Diego Comic Con now. Um, I would say it's more about the films than anything else, right? What yeah. Was, yeah. What was it like to watch that transition? Well, you know, look, I was I was sort of in that because I mean, you I caused that, did, Mark. It's your fault that Comic Con um, ain't about com. No, I'm just kidding. We 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 did a huge Time Cop panel like in '94 that uh, filled an auditorium. Van Dam was there. That was insane. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, look, it, it, I think it's it's cool, and I love the enthusiasm that everybody has for the shows and the movies, and you know that's great. And the giant lines to get in, it's not my thing anymore, but you know that's okay. Uh, I'm friends with Mark Evanier. Do you know who he is? Have you heard of him? He has a great blog. Anyway, he's written lots of comics, uh, and um, what's he writing now? He's doing um, shit. Oh, Gru. If you ever read Gru, the barbarian guy. Um, oh, no, no, Sergio, no. I'm familiar Sergio with it, Art. but I have not read it. Anyway, Mark is a really good guy. He's, he's been around forever. And he basically said, Comic-Con now, if you want it to be about comics, it can be about comics. Because there's lots of comic book panels and, you know, stuff for comic book fans. There's still a comic book area. If you want to look at old comics, is what I used to do. And if you're into media, great. If you're into manga, great. If you're anime, great. If you're into games, great. If you're into toys, great. I mean, all that stuff is there too. So you can choose your con because it's so friggin' huge now um, that uh, you can mm-hmm. do whatever you want. But yes, I have. Look, who doesn't? I have. I I, I went to like 35 of them straight, and uh, or 30 maybe. So 30. And the first one I went to was in. Um, Oh, it was in 84. Uh, and then it was in this smaller hotel, and it wasn't super crowded. And you got to walk up to the artists and just talk to anybody you wanted to. And uh, um, there was, you know, it, it was a more of a familiar atmosphere then, or a more, I don't want to say intimate, but you could just get to know people better. Now it's so huge, but I think you just find your groups. You know, you just find that group that you want to be part of. So... If you want to be part of the comic group, there's still panels on that. And um, but I had some amazing. One of my favorite experiences at Comic Con was in '97 or '96, and they had the surviving guys who worked on Action Comics number one there, um, and there were like four of them. The editor was still alive. I think he died six months after that. Uh, who this is the guy who bought Superman and Batman. So you're like, wow. Well, you're responsible for a lot, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, Some of the artists, not obviously the Superman artists, I think it already passed away, but uh, some of the artists of the other things were there. And that was amazing, you know, because it was this transition period between, totally between Golden Age, Silver Age, and then coming into Modern Age now. And uh, um, I have a real affection for Golden Age books, so um, they're nuts. Well, can I say, I'm, I'm glad to see, because you're reading uh, Sergeant Rock versus Army Dead, or the Army of Dead. Is that currently dropping? Hmm? Is that currently dropping, or do you, like, I'm... Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, okay. I, 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 man, I only buy graphic novels anymore. I just literally don't have room for comic book issues, plus, like I said, life and whatever. And I'm doing a little catching up and here and there, and just kind of picking things from that I haven't got to the last past decade, you know what I mean? And it been phenomenal i'm about to start doing reviews on the show uh we'll get to that at a later point in time though i need a little bit more time to set my life up and then you know factors factory might do comic book reviews um i might have to include the american in it just for shits and giggles i don't give a damn yeah we're gonna we're gonna do old comics we're gonna do new comics we're just gonna do all kinds of comics just to let people know the variety of comics that's out there um i forgot my damn question in my ramble and my promo for the other show that i'm about to start <laughs> if the predator liked the candy, what would his favorite candy be? Hmm. Jawbreakers. Okay, now what's a xenomorphs? Xenomorphs? I think they'd like licorice. Don't all think right, is, all right. Those answers seem Black, pretty legit, Mark. Black licorice. Eh. You know, the, the eh. tough stuff. Those, those answers seem yeah. pretty pretty damn legit, Mark. I can't I can't yeah. lie. Yeah. Damn. They make sense, but okay. Maybe a hundred thousand dollar bars. Those are pretty good too. 
Yeah. Uh, Other games are pretty nice. <laughs> oh, man. Can I say, I just, looking through the list of everything do, you do you on, think, oh, Go ahead, Hardaway. Do you think the Predator would successfully be able to hunt Popeye? Oh, Popeye? No way. Popeye would beat his ass. <laughs> hey, at least look, you straight up with it, Hardaway. I don't know whoever else you brought that to. But yeah, yeah. Um, let me ask You're you talking. something on the That's note. My favorite oh. Hold on. Hold on. I oh, know what you say, sir. Yeah. I was going to say, Popeye is probably my favorite cartoon character of all time. Uh, I love Popeye. So, Popeye beat him up. He'd kick the ass of the alien. He'd, uh, there's nobody. <laughs> So what if he didn't have no spinach? No spinach? He'd find it. You know, because he's got that he's got that way of finding the spinach. So Olive would bring it to him. Yeah. Popeye <laughs> finds spinach like Snoop Dogg finds cannabis. That's just yes. the fact. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it has uh, been written in the stars. This is how it is. Let me ask you, <laughs> it let is me ask you something, man. As somebody that worked with uh, so much of the other Dark Horse stuff. I want to know, why is it you think Fox can't do a damn Alien versus Predator film right? The material's there. <laughs> You're asking the wrong guy. I don't know. Well, would you I, go I do one know. right, Mark, please? Because... Well, it, we, we we tried back in the day. But, you know, you know, you were talking about how it's changed for comic books and stuff. Back around 89, 90, when I was starting out, I went to meetings and bringing up comic books was like saying you were, uh, you know, you were just out of the, the kindergarten or something. It was, it was not a good reference to say, um, I have a comic book background that, that, that killed you. In fact, my agent, I remember the time said, don't bring that up. Then all these comic book movies started happening. I think it was Batman. The first Michael Keaton, Batman made a big difference. Then all of a sudden now it seems like, you know, in my background, the comic books, are what people remember as much as the shows more than the shows, which is fine. But it's like, you know, comics, they become, at least in the industry, accepted as a legitimate thing because it makes up freaking much money. What was it like to see that evolution from where, you know, when you brought it up in the in the boardroom, it was like to get out of the room, you're a child, to where now it's like, you work in comic books? What comic books have you made? Let's talk about it. Can we make right. it into a film? You know? Yeah. No, it's it's a it's a huge difference. Everybody wants to option them and and stuff. I've the American I own's been optioned like three times. Um, you know, it's it's people really are they love graphic novels. One reason the movie industry likes them is the same reason they like novels and books, is that it it pre sells the the idea. I mean, you can see it and go like, well, that idea works. Okay. We can make a movie out of that. So that's one reason they like it. But also I just think, you know, comics are this freaking easy sort of expression. There's no, they're not nearly as much money on the line when you do a comic. It doesn't have to be any money on the line if you're doing it yourself. Um, and, uh, and I think that's more creative in a way than trying to pipe your head into, you know, the create, you know, characters that have already been created or, um, you know, work. Look, I enjoyed working on Superman and Superman, Batman. That's a whole different thing than writing your own book. It's a whole different, a uh, lot of editorial discussions and you need to cross over this guy and this guy and all that kind of stuff. And uh, did you ever, when you were writing those books, come across like a situation yeah. where maybe you wanted to kill a character or give a character a, a shift of, you know, character where you're like, oh, I want to do this to develop the character in this way. And and you were instantly just shot down to where it was kind of sad. Uh, yes. Um, but uh, to me, the, you know, in, in a way it was, it was, there was that. But, but the thing that really got me was to go in and have, I would present like a nine issue arc or something. You know, this is what I want to do. And they'd say, great, you're hired, get to work. And then get around to issue four, they said, okay, stick this character in it. I go, well, what? Where does that fit into what I'm doing? I don't care. We're doing a industry, you know, company-wide crossover. You need to put them in. And uh, that to me was like, Jesus Christ, you know, this is 
then I, you know, I came came to terms with it. It's a business. I don't own these characters. They hired me. They're saying do this, so I could quit. That's I I never quit anything. So you know, I stick it out. And uh, so you know, that's that's frustrating. And then, again, that goes back to editorial stuff, where somebody just says do this, do that, and you're you're like because why? And it's like well, it's these reasons kind of outside your sphere of influence. Oh. Awesome. I I hate to say awesome, but it's good to know that my job isn't the only job that does that bullshit. I swear. <laughs> I, um, just being told to do something that doesn't make any uh, like doesn't make any sense at all, and when you ask for the reason, they're just like, you know, because the higher up said so, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, just do it. <laughs> True enough. Like, great. <laughs> anyway. You're like, Man, I thought you were going to ask a damn email, question. A memo? No, I was, look, I was relating to the bullshit. Like, you, <laughs> I couldn't help it. I listened to that story and was just like, damn, I feel that. I feel, I feel that greatly. Um, Man. I got to yeah, know. Why, why are you hating there's Gilbert? No, like, there's no... No, why are you hating Dilbert, Mark? I gotta know. Dilbert? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, um, it's poorly drawn. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, the, uh, I mean, I don't want to get political, but the guy's politics are nuts. Uh, the guy that does it. And uh, so but that's my thing. Um However, the big, big reason is I don't find it funny anymore. And it's this guy never learned how to draw at all. He's, he's still bad. Started bad and he's still bad. Sorry, Dilbert guy. But, uh, you know, take an art lesson. So, um, you're not Dilbert fans, I hope. Uh, I mean, look, I, I read, yeah. I, I don't know that I've read it in a, like, I haven't read Dilbert in a long time. I used to get the monthly calendars that had like little comic right. strips of him. And and I did enjoy those. I don't now. I don't know. I mean, it was when I was far younger, and I'd worked a lot of uh, like telemarketing BS jobs, you know. So maybe it was in part to that of the office. And I was like, yeah, I can see all this dumb j- shit that happens all the time, where it's like, why is this being said? I swear. And it, so so I guess in part to that, but like not so much anymore, dude. I don't know. I've, it's been so long since I picked it up. I couldn't tell you if I would be a fan of it now or not. You know, um, yeah. probably not. I like things a little more twisted. There's a reason I like, you know, the mask, Evil Ernie, Deadpool, Lobo, um, vinyl and plastic from Wagner. Like, I, I like things with a bit more of an edge. Right. You know? Me too. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, the Alien and Predator books, all the stuff. Like, I even, I've even liked what Marvel has done in the Alien so far, as far as the first graphic they put out. I think they've handled that well. Eh, let's look to that, man. Now that they own Fox, right? And and sadly, the moment that happened, God, Dark Horse lost so much, you know? And especially after, you know, Disney had already bought Lucas. Uh, or right. Luke, yeah, you know, so they lost Star Wars. They lost all their Fox properties. Do you ever, as someone that worked on them previously and is also a fan of them, are concerned with the fact that they'll get a little whitewashed as opposed to being as aggressive as they were? I don't know. I was reading the new Predator one they're doing, uh, Marvel's doing, uh, and uh, it's not whitewashed. It's but it's uh, it's certainly paced. I mean, it's it's taken a while to get to this to get to the story. Um, but, uh, um, it's well done and it's, it certainly doesn't spare what Predator is, which is a very dark, brutal, you know, a world and people get torn apart in it. So, uh, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I, I think they'll do whatever they do. I don't think they'll have a problem with content. I think it'll just be, you know, who do they get to do them and are they good and that kind <coughs> of stuff. Um, but, uh. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, after I quit writing them, I sort of quit reading them, which is what happens to me even with shows. You know, I was on Smallville for three years. I quit. Um, love everybody there. But I didn't watch the next seven seasons. I mean, I just it's sort of like 
you know, it's like when you go to school, I'm in the school, I know everybody there, then I graduate and I go somewhere else. I don't go back to that school all the time. And like, hey, everybody, it's me again, you know, whatever. So uh, it's a long way of saying I sort of graduated away from Aliens and Predator. I mean, I did them and they were really fun to do and I'm really happy they're still doing them, but uh, I'm, I'm on to other things, so, you know. <laughs> The hell are you doing over there, Harley? So what uh, oh, my ear was itching, so I was digging in my ear. Okay, I just don't ask. Don't ask questions if you didn't want. Whatever, to man. I thought maybe you were getting attacked by Dahmer or some shit. No, 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 no. That that that's they're in the fire. That's what the fire is for. For serial killers to show up. All right, then. That's. That's fairly interesting, All right? Um, now I'm curious, man. I'm I'm gonna assume. I'm hoping I'm not making an ass out of myself. That when you initially wrote, <laughs> did, you, did you start with you did it on pen and paper, or did you always use a laptop or something to that effect? Uh, alien or computer? Right. Yeah, no, I had a I had a very primitive computer, but yeah, I had one. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I've been on a laptop ish or computer since. When did I buy it? Eighty five or eighty four, something like that. So they were really, they were really something back then. But uh, um, I remember it took two hours to print a movie script on those old printers. So uh, each disc could only hold twenty five pages. Oh my god, crazy. Mark, you just made my brain hurt a little thinking about that in the grand oh. context of things. Like. Well, I I typed my first script, and uh, it was 100 pages. I had to retype it three times. Oh. So once I got done with that, and they put out computers, I said, I don't care what it takes to get one of these things. I'm getting <laughs> it, because I'm tired of retyping. So So what um, makes you a PC guy as opposed to Mac? Um, you know, they were, they were there back in the day, and they were cheaper. Uh, my first computer was a K Pro, which is I don't know what that would be called. It's not it's not Windows or anything. It's I don't know what that thing was. Probably Linux. Yeah, that's um, what, I would assume CPM, Linux. CPM, CPM. Very old operating system. Uh, anyway, I stayed with PC because my brother, younger brother, worked at Microsoft, and uh, he was able to help me with tech stuff. So, uh, like you know, Word or Windows or whatever. He was working on that stuff back in the 90s. So, um, and then I have, I have two other brothers that uh, are all uh, one has a doctorate in mathematics, and the other one has a doctorate in, I think, engineering. And uh, the other one retired from Microsoft and he was like 30. So, well, let know. me ask you then at that <laughs> do you ever use them as resources for when you're writing? Like you write something and your brain goes, that. Let me go talk to my brother who's got a doc doctorate in mathematics and see if he can make this make sense mathematically or something like that. Well, usually they tell me it makes no sense. So then I just have to do it anyway. So, you know, I wasn't going to let that stop me. Um, but, uh, yeah, occasionally, you know, I, I would ask, uh, you know, if... But, you know, they're, they're very specialized, and I don't really write about computers that much and stuff. So it's... Uh, or aerospace, so it's like uh, uh, yeah, occasionally. But more, I call, I write, I you know, I'll ask, you know, Windows is fucking up again. How do, what the hell? <laughs> you know? All I know <laughs> is now I want to see you and all three of your brothers collaborate on a story about how. Oh, okay. Well, that, that would be a fun to get us in a room. Together. That's 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 all I'm saying. So to that effect, man. I mean, I know you, you say you like it when you're in a room full of writers and just spitting around ideas. Yeah. You ever, like, do you find that that's just always fun? Does it ever, like, just get tense to where you got people on one another's edge? What do you do in those moments right. to increase the levity to where, you know, you can kill, you don't want to cut, you don't want tensions you can cut a knife with. You want comedy you can cut a knife with. What do you do to make sure that happens? Yeah, it's true. Some, I mean, when it, when it, when a room works, it's the best thing on. It's so much fun, and uh, to go back to like the Battlestar room was a lot of very good writers who got along really well. 
So, but I've been in rooms where people were not getting along so well. Uh, factions break out and stuff like that. My goal was always not to have to pick a faction. I, you know, I, I don't want to. I don't wanna play that game. Um, and uh, so I try to stay out of the politics of it. I always try to stay out of the politics of stuff. And there are, you know, it's intriguing sometimes in a room. There's guys kissing up to the boss, or you know, taking credit that they don't deserve, or that kind of stuff. <clears throat> that occasionally happens. It's I would say it's actually fairly rare because most. The thing about a writer's room that's fun is uh, everybody there is also whip smart because they wouldn't be there <laughs> if they weren't really good writers and smart. And uh, that can be both intimidating, but also just really challenging and fun. You're going like, wow, every minute some great idea is coming at me. Does that ever does that ever just come to a, a war of smart ass wits? Like, have you ever just and I don't mean that in like a malicious manner. But just like where you got a writer's room and everybody's being a pack of smart asses, you know, just yeah. throwing around wit. Like, I, I'm sorry. Those are the moments I want to be part of, Mark. I can't lie. Well, you, yeah, there, I, I worked on a show very early uh, that was set in Vegas. Um, that was on a network called UPN that no longer exists. And uh, that was just the show. And I, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. was terrible. Well, we, we kind of <laughs> knew it was terrible while we were doing it. Um, it was terrible, but uh, I guess it was good for what I was trying to do. But it was the most fun I've ever had on a show because we just laughed all the time. We took a tour of Vegas and we were just rolling on the floor laughing about every idiotic thing you can imagine. It was the most, it was really fun. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know that that generates enough story to just be cracking wise all the time, but uh, that was fun. Um, but no, the Battlestar room is great. I, most rooms are really good. You know, they just don't function unless you get along. So, uh, but there, there have been in a few that are tense. Well, let me ask as far as functioning, man, I, I see like through your list of credentials, there's several things that you've done that were just made into pilots. Uh, I think the main two that probably stick out to me are, uh, Barbarella and, uh, Hellraiser, right? Which is Constantine for those that don't know Hellraiser. Or Hellblazer, my bad. I don't know why I said Hellblazer, which is constant. That is John Constantine, which you later worked on the show. Um, What's it like to work on a pilot and put something together like that and then to have to shop it around and for it not to go to fruition? And for that matter, the Hellraiser, man, is that was that something that was done previous to the Constantine show? Hellblazer. The the Hellraiser. Hellblazer. I did Pinhead. I did that Hellraiser. Um, I did do Constantine too. I did that in the uh, 2004. Oh damn! I need to, I need to read so, closer, Mark. My bad. Okay. I it's did been both. a long People day. They confuse them all the time. They confuse them all the time. Huh. But uh, yeah, so I, I was working on Hellraiser up until the summer, when a corporate thing happened at Warner Brothers, and there you go, everything was killed. And uh, I did uh, the 13 episodes of Constantine that was on. Um, Jesus, ABC, and I can't remember. No, oh, that CW. was on CW. CW. Yeah, CW. CW. Yeah. Uh, uh, I thought it was CW. Wait, I thought Constantine, you know, I don't mean to correct you on your own work, Mark, but I could have sworn that that was on the C-Dub because that was part of their huge DC network. Or DC. They put, yeah, because no, they, they got they the... They sold this one out yeah. to, to a network. Oh, they did? Uh, All right. Yeah, on NBC. Um which was a mistake, probably. But why? Let me ask you to that. Why do you think that didn't get a good reception to the point where it didn't get renewed? Because I loved that show. We we were all baffled. We just we couldn't get it. I mean, it was not on a great time slot. It was on like ten o'clock at night on a Friday or Thursday or something. Friday. Um, they just didn't get behind it really, and um, it was actually sad. We. Uh, we put a lot into that show. I know the guy running it was Dan Daniel Cerrone, a great guy, and it was uh, it was just very disappointing when it fell fell apart. Yeah, um, and even even the uh, I'm not sure the gentleman's name that played Constantine. Oh yeah, but it was a phenomenal casting. Yeah, Ryan, um, forget his first name now. Matt Ryan, he was awesome. He's such a great guy too. Yeah, and it, he was on uh, Legends of Tomorrow. I was glad to see them 
uh, give him that continuation. Because like I said, I think, and no offense to Keanu Reeves, who's a hell of an actor, and obviously everyone knows that name. Um, I honestly preferred his version of Constantine as opposed to Reeves. You know what I mean? I like Reeves, but... Uh, oh, I liked both. I just, I just think yeah. the, uh, the one that was the TV show, it, it was way more similar to the comic book where you could tell the the film was uh, it was made for a film, you know what I mean? And they just pushed in more, way harder, way quicker. Right. Here's here's a funny thing about that show. So Constantine is big deal is he smokes, you know, in the comics he smokes all the time. We couldn't have him smoking. So if you watch the show, he'll have a cigarette, but he's never taken a puff. And uh Finally, when we knew we were coming back at the end, he was just smoking. <laughs> we said to hell with it. <laughs> so, but I, th- so I think the last episode or two, he's smoking. But that was the sort of thing you got into with, you know, being on a network. It was uh, a lot of, uh, again, a lot of just instructions on what you're supposed to do. And it was complicated and hard to hard to keep it going. So, you ever worried that that affects art too much as far as just corporations wanting to make it to where oh no everyone must love this so it makes it to where we don't make the uh, what's the word I'm looking for here um we don't make pieces that may be controversial because nobody wants to hurt anybody's fucking feelings because you want to be able to get everybody's money as far as these corporations are concerned so I think in that there may be a lot of thought processes and things that would be done lost it like what's your opinion on all of that yeah no it's it's uh, and also for for specifically network television they're asking for things that are very sp- so specific to what that that world is and, and for instance is um ratings you know like hbo or you know if you're on stars or something like that the ratings aren't quite as important the day-to-day ratings But if you're on network, they're very important. So like Constantine, they would say, um, set a show in Chicago. And we go, well, why? If we put it in Chicago, they'll put a bumper for it in their 9 o'clock news. And we could get another quarter point of ratings. So those were the kind of business things that were impacting the show. Where you go, put it in Chicago because we get a quarter. I, I asked him once, I said, does a quarter point make really that big a difference? It makes all the difference. So, you know, it was, uh, and again, I wasn't running that show. Poor Daniel. Oof, he was under a lot of a lot of pressure. But um, that's the kind of stuff that you get into. On other networks, like I worked for Netflix twice, you know, there's a little less worry about, you know, uh, how the audience is. I mean, Daredevil obviously did great. Um, uh, I think Hemlock Grove that I did was uh, probably the <coughs> reason. I don't know. But uh, they I did liked three it. Seasons of it. They did three seasons of it. So Yeah, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks. What's your opinion of that, man, as far as the impact of things going from, oh, there's network TV to now there's cable? To, then you have HBO and Stars and all that, and now you have I don't know how many streaming services. I'm <laughs> I'm honestly not even frankly going to begin to guess. What do you think that's done to the industry as far as comic books getting into that medium? And do you think it's given them maybe a little bit more leeway? Oh yeah, I think it's been it's been great. I mean, you know, when I started in television, it was still pretty much you know HBO, Showtime, and the networks. You know, so there weren't a lot of places to go and to have all <laughs> these opportunities like Netflix and Amazon and Hulu and um, overseas stuff, uh, Peacock now.H uh, I could I could go on too. there's a bunch. Yeah. Um, not Amazon. Yeah. I shows, you know, the, but the flip side of that is there's 400 shows, 450 shows, and it's very hard to rise up out of that. To, to be the show where everybody goes to be the Game of Thrones, you know, there aren't too many of those, you know, Lord of the Rings, not too many of those. So uh, if you're not those big, giant, huge franchises, then you've got to do something to find a way to rise up. And uh, I don't know exactly what that is. Comic books or some of it, like the boys or uh, um, 
stuff like that. Seeing that, it makes me feel like um, you need to essentially find a comic that had a great deal. Because I mean, obviously, like The Walking Dead and The Boys were both right. overly, overly successful comic books. You know what I mean? And I think that's what allowed them to translate into film and TV because you had such a large base of people that are already read the comic books that are telling people, oh, you should watch this show. It's going to be dope. You should watch this show. It's going to be dope. You know, um, to that ilk, man, I'm curious. Let's say you can pick a comic. Nothing that you personally have worked on, nothing from the big two, to turn into either a film or TV, right? She going with Mark. What's that? What's that creme de la creme for you? The great book that's been not on TV, probably not on TV because they don't want it on TV. Whoever did it, um, uh, hmm. you know, there's a lot of uh, independent books I love that. I don't know if they would translate exactly. Um, there's an artist named artist writer named Daniel Klaus who did Eight Ball and uh, um, a bunch of stuff. His stuff's uh, very interesting and creepy. I think one movie was made out of something he did, um, but I like his stuff. Um, comic books that I would make a movie out of. Wow. Actually, I think uh, Sergeant Rock versus the Army of the Dead would be cool, but you know that's a, that's kind of a no-brainer. You you better uh, get. I don't, man. Look, if you can get Bruce Campbell to agree, um, um, I'm 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 down with. I, I can't lie, man. I love seeing him come back as that character. I know it might drive him crazy a little bit sometimes, which I can fully understand. It's that whole um, it's that whole like you know um. Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans, like, man, we played Cap and Iron Man forever. We really want to go on and do something else. And I, I can get that as an actor, how it may stagnate you. You know what I mean? Um, just to repetitively say, play the same character. But at the same time, uh, I'm down to see Bruce Campbell as Ash as long as the story's good because he, he does it so well. Um, yeah. And that would be very interesting to see him like do something like that as far as like any, I would love to see any of the army of darkness versus almost anybody be done. You know, I think the Freddie versus Jason, in my opinion, would probably be the funniest. Right. <laughs> I, right. I, there, there just be something about that, but yo, Mark, can I say I've been up way too damn long today, man. It has been a privilege to have you stop by and join our Thanks, quest man. on the question here before we cut yeah, this out. Absolute Hardaway, do you want to ask anything? Because I've been asking like a shitload of questions. <laughs> Are you really no. just going to be yeah. silent? Look, yes, this no. shit, fuck, no. whatever. No, I actually do have a good idea. Uh, you shush. You shush. You, you Look, I was listening to stories and now you got me asking questions. All right. Face hugger on Popeye's face. What do you think that alien would look like? Jeez, hmm. that'd be a very muscular alien. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I uh, but I want to see it. Oh my god! Actually, there is somebody that should do Popeye versus aliens. That that <laughs> actually is a book that should be done, man. That would be versus aliens and predator. And he's got he's oh, up good God. Taste, olive oil and uh, Bruto, uh, Bluto and uh, uh, who's the guy Wimpy eating his hamburgers and you know I, I don't want to see awesome. an alien be like I gladly hug your face today for a hamburger to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Dude, what are you talking about? Oh my God! Yeah, great. That's a comic. That would be great. Oh, I might, I might, uh, I might, I might, uh. Have to make at least the drawing come to fruition that hopefully Mike will probably sell really quickly. Mark, and we're gonna have to definitely have you back as long as you're down for a little bit of a round table with a collaboration of several people over here, man. But before we go, can I get you to be like, Hey, I'm Mark, Ver I'm Mark behind him. I about fucked your name up terribly, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, okay. and uh. That Make I sure do. you check out the questionnaire every Wednesday at seven. And if you want to add anything, any kind of flavor, throw in piss shit, fuck. It's all on you. Well, shit. Um, I'm Mark Verheiden. Check out the questionnaire. Uh, what time? Wednesday, 
at 7? Wednesday at 7. On the internet, which is on your computer. And that's really a good thing. PC is probably better than Apple. Um, enjoy. Watch it all. This week we talk about Popeye versus Alien. So, coming soon. <laughs> Mark, it has Hopefully been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Go ahead, Hardaway. I said hopically to a theater near you. Oh, I, I'm at least I'm at least gonna talk to a past guest, and we might have to have a round table where it gets drawn as far as the Xenomorph version of what would come out of Popeye. <laughs> hopefully, with you uh, in the room, Mark. That that's uh, definitely a plan I have on my table now. I just want to let you know. Uh, but again. Mark, See, it's the been a issue pleasure. I'm thinking real quick, though, before I, we leave, it's, it's, is that the, the face hugger wouldn't even kill him. It wouldn't even be able to kill him. Hey, look, can we just let that imagination live? And and just, and heal. It's, it's okay, Hardaway. Look, look, you told me you needed to get to sleep <laughs> on the... You fell asleep on me on the second episode of Kickstarting Comics, bro. I gotta get some sleep at some point or I'm gonna lose my shit. I'm not even gonna lie. Mark, it has been an absolute <laughs> pleasure. I appreciate <laughs> you. you greatly for coming fun. by and joining our quest. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the unknown factor, right? Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell, or whatever else you need to do, depending on if you're on Amazon, Audible, Spotify. I think there's things you click to notify when the next episode's and, coming up. And, and I'm JD Day Hardaway. If you find me, you can just like send me cheesecake and you can send me random questions to ask people. I might ask them actually. Because he literally wasn't eating anything today on the show, man. But I do have to say, that's I love not true. Your favorite. That is not true. Oh, well, I missed it then, Hardaway. You're too dark, bro, right? But I love your favorite shape is Michael Myers. But apparently, you ain't afraid of no mythical creatures. But I want to know if you've enjoyed this interview with Mark, right? What you can do, yeah, is even though he's got a crap load of them now, right? You can send him another crash mobile, right? Right? Please. Either, either that. For some Honey Nut Cheerios, which is funny as hell that that was your answer. Now, I want to let you all know, if you didn't enjoy this interview with Mark, man, if you were like, what kind of crap was that, right? You find you a real-life serial killer, you dress him up in brown and yellow, and you send him to Mark's house. This has been The Questionnaire. Have a good night, y'all. Good night. Oh, boy.